Good morning guys. I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Today for me is going to be a painting day. So I've got a bunch of clay pieces here. I've got a bunch of resin pieces back there that are waiting to get painted as well. And then I also have a tree creature that if I have enough time, I'm going to get that painted too. But a little bit of a quick update. I did a little bit of cleaning around the studio. I threw away a bunch of stuff that I've just never really used that was just kind of taking up space. So all my shelves are nice and clean. Um, I reorganized my paints and stuff like that. So you'll notice that this thing used to have like a bunch of different jars and tools and stuff like that. Well, that got moved to my closet and now I have all my paints in it. So it takes up a lot less space. I have room on my shelves and it's, it's really nice to have this like less crowdedness around me. I also picked up a few new sculpting tools, just something fun to try. I've seen people use these ones every now and again. I thought it'd be fun to try and get a little bit more detail into my sculpting, especially since I'm gonna be starting to do more molding. But yeah, this little guy is a commission for an Indiana Jones cosplay. So I am trying to make him as detailed as possible for the person that commissioned him. But yeah, as I was saying, I made a bunch of molds recently. I believe I showed them in the last vlog. We just didn't uncast them uh, in time, but they came out really good. I did three sets for what is pretty much a monitor themed dragon. And um, once I get the pieces done for this iguana, we'll start painting those. I've never really painted on resin pieces before, so we'll see how well that goes. But I'm really happy with how they turned out. You'll notice that I um, added a little bit of mica powder to each one to try and like copy the colors for whichever one is going to be whatever color. Um, I'm right now just trying to use a bunch of old resin before it goes bad, so that's the main reason for this, instead of just using like white resin that cures a lot faster. I'm just trying to use up my resin and then I'm going to order some new resin. I figured it'd be fun to add a little bit of mica powder, that way I could see the details a little bit more instead of having them just a solid like white or kind of opaque clear color. It's kind of refreshing working on a new like reptile piece. I haven't done a hyper realistic reptile in a very long time. I've been actually wanting to design another like realistic looking reptile type um, dragon, but I've just been trying to get all these commissions done so I haven't had a chance to start a bunch of newer pieces um, other than working on the molds and stuff. Once I get them done, which this one and the tree are the last one I'm working on, I might take more, but I will probably not take too many more, just so I can take a bit of a break. And I'm going to get that Screamer uh, Fox Spirit done. I know I have a bunch of you guys really wanting to see how that's going to come out, and I have a better idea of what I'm going to do with it now. So. Um, that's probably like a really good thing that I took a break from it because I wasn't really sure how I wanted to go about doing it and now I have a clearer idea of what I want to do with it so really excited to start that back up so I want to get these all done real quick but also they're super detailed pieces so I have to take my time at the same time. <laughs> oh another fun thing that I ended up doing was changing up my oil painting setup. Someone threw away the top of a desk that looked really cool and it was solid it was nice it just didn't have legs there's a few very small scratches it wasn't cheap furniture at all so i decided to grab it my original plans were to use it um under the tv stand and have it kind of as a pull out table to work on because our area is kind of like tight in the living room so we don't have a coffee table, so it'd be nice to have a little work area there. Right now I have a little piece of wood and one of my fold-out tables underneath there, and I just pull that out to work on whenever I want to work in the living room. But uh, I ended up deciding to use it on my like easel area um, because it didn't fit under there. It was just a little too big. So I just kind of set everything up on that, and I think it looks pretty cool. I've got all my plants all spread out now. Most of my oil painting stuff is over there and off of the shelves in here. 
and I think it looks really nice. It's definitely different. The original plant stand that I was using, I have pushed back with all my like brushes and a few of the other plants. Got more room for my palm trees now. Um, they're getting kind of big and I've got multiple of them, so it was definitely nice to just kind of do something a little different. But yeah, I've been just kind of slowly trying to like clean things up, uh, change things a bit, redecorate, make it a little bit more roomy, because uh, our apartment is, it's small, but it's not big for like my work stuff and us to live in at the same time. My stuff takes up a lot of space. So I've been just kind of trying to get rid of a bunch of useless stuff that we have. Sorry if you guys can hear the lawn service there by our building. <laughs> they just started as soon as I turned the camera on. But I just finished painting everything and I realized something really cool about the iguana's eyes is they kind of follow you. Like the way I have them set in to the face. They just kind of like look like they follow you. I thought that was really cool. Also a little creepy, but also pretty cool. <laughs> Okay, it is the next day, and I've been spending the morning painting the tree commission. And I'm gonna take a break from him. I think I'm pretty much done other than adding a little bit more detail around his face. Um, yesterday I finished the iguana pieces, and then I also finished some of the painting for my resin pieces. I decided to go with kind of a whiny, like, red color for one, and then a green color. And then I just have the blue pieces that I just started, and we're going to work on those today. Anyways, let me get our tree out of the way, and we can start on those. Yeah, so I am so happy with how these molds came out. I've already started sculpting a different idea for my shop. I've got a really cute, just kind of strange thing that I want to make, so I've been slowly trying to work on that at night. I'm taking a break because I'm kind of like not sure how I want to go about doing the face. Um, but yeah, I, I, I love doing these molds. Also, I've noticed the resin, it takes the paint so much better than the clay. Um, like it does have a chance of peeling off, but while painting, it's going on so much easier than uh, painting clay. So that's like a really happy little uh, surprise. I wasn't sure how it would do compared to painting the clay and it's doing so much better. But yeah, once I get these three done, I'll add them to the shop, see how they do. Um, if they do really well, I'll probably make some more. But I wanna work on another mold piece before I do too many of these. I still need to add the horns to the head. I would just want to connect them after getting all the painting done first. I don't think I'm gonna really like paint the horns. I might on like like this one. I kind of want to paint the horns for this one, but I think I'll leave them the color of the resin and just go over it to make them look a little bit shinier. Debating on with these doing the claws the gold like I did with the other ones. I think it looked nice. I just don't want to be too matchy-matchy with them, but like they are going out at the same time so they can kind of look alike and then next time I do more I could do a different like color theme to where the claws won't be gold. But I don't know. I think the tripod decided to move for some reason. Um, I think the gold will look good with the blue. In worst case, I paint over it if it doesn't look good. Oh, I guess on some more personal news, um, I actually ordered and I have a little workout bike now. I decided since I've been feeling a lot better to start working out, not to like lose weight or anything like that, to just like feel better in general. Because um, I just feel kind of bleh physically. I know I could be in better shape and it would just be nice to actually like 
just improve on that. So yeah, I've been trying to do it. Um, so out of shape, it is like kicking my butt. But I've been trying to do it like every other day, like 30 or 40 minutes, which is kind of hard um, because I don't think I've ever mentioned this, but I have scar tissue in my right knee. I ended up scraping it like years ago and it ended up getting a staph infection. Um, so I have scar tissue under my kneecap. So like it actually is really hard for me to like walk sometimes because of that if it inflames and stuff like that. So um, I do need something like cardio. That's why I got the bike, but it is really hard on my knees. <laughs> So I've been taking it kind of slow. You won't see me like pedaling super fast or anything like that. Mainly just kind of going at a nice relaxing bike pace and I'm still out of breath. <laughs> but yeah, that's my little random update that's not art related. I've uh, just been doing that. Oh, I guess uh, another little update. I've been reading more at night lately which I found really relaxing. I started up on one of my favorite book series, which I did not know had so many more um, books. Um, so I'm really happy about that. And I've been starting up on that. Michael's actually the one that got me started back up on it because for my birthday, he ended up getting me a book from the series and I didn't know they had a new book. And then I looked it up and then there were like, six or seven new books. I was like, oh my god, it's been a while since I've read. Which I already had a bunch of books from it. I guess I should mention the series. Does anyone know about the, like, Shadowhunter series? Um, I can't think of the name of the author. I can't think of her last name, but it's like Claire or something. And it's like, the first series is like the Immortal Instruments. And I just, I really like that series. I started back up by reading one of the more prequel series. Um, it's, well, it's not really a prequel. It kind of covers the entire thing because it's following a, a separate character than the rest of the books follow. It's still kind of a main character, um, but he like has a very long life span, so it follows him through like the age of like. Uh, uh, when did the book start? I think it started in like 1800 something and then it ended in the like 2000 range. So it's a very interesting book reading something that spans such a long distance following one character, which I really, really liked actually. Okay, so it's been a couple of days. I kind of took a break from filming this vlog mainly because I was trying to finish this dude. And I think he came out really good. I still need to take pictures and see if the buyer is happy with him. Um, so he's technically not done until I get the okay that he's done. So yeah, I finished him and then I also got all of our clay pieces done for the iguana commission and my monitor dragons. So they all look really good. I'm so happy with these and it's really cool how light they are versus if I had these made out of clay. So I got those done and I also kind of started on putting them together. So I've got the tail and the body kind of put together and the wings. So the little like finger bits for the wings are already in place. Uh, you can kind of get a better idea of the wing here. And I'm going to start putting the legs together. We also had the faces all finished too. But yeah, I'm going to start gluing these onto the fabric for the legs, and then I'm also going to start putting the iguana together. If I look like my eyes are puffy, it's not because I'm sick, it's because I am uh, lacking sleep. A uh, couple days have been pretty rainy and stormy and stuff, and Axel does not like the storm weather, so he was all freaked out last night, so I didn't get much sleep trying to keep him in bed and settled down and stuff like that, so... I'm tired. <laughs> Anyways, got all the fabric and we're gonna start gluing these in place. I'm so happy with how these came out. I'm just really hoping that they um, do well in my shop because things are kind of dying down, which is nice not being super busy, but also like things haven't really been selling in the shop 
so that's kind of concerning. Plus, I haven't really even put anything in the shop. I've been so busy with commissions, so it's probably partially my fault. Like, every website, um, they have algorithms, so it's probably like, hey, you haven't added anything, so we're just gonna not show it as much. I really am not sure how Etsy deals with that stuff anymore. It's changed so many times. Oh, so another little update. Um, I don't know if anyone else is having this type of trouble, but I am having the hardest time finding original Sculpey in bulk online. And I'm running low, which it's probably a good thing that I'm starting to do molds because it looks like there is like a Sculpey shortage nationwide. Um, yay! <laughs> but yeah, I have only a, a couple pounds left and I'm really worried about running out. I mean, I can still buy, like, smaller packs, but they're, like, a lot more expensive than they normally are. Um, what's it? Usually I try to get the bulk, like, 24-pound box set because it's just a way better buy than anything else. Plus, I um, would end up going through the other box sets, like, crazy fast, so I don't really want to, like, order clay that, that many times in a year so I usually just get 24 pounds that's the largest you can get original Sculpey and I can't find it anywhere I think I found one person selling it and normally this box is like 150 at most after shipping they wanted like $360 for this box and it's like that's insane so I am uh, still on the hunt for original Sculpey so I can continue making clay pieces. Hopefully I can find some. If not, I'm going to just have to get like an 8 pound box and hope that it's not priced the same as the 24 pound box because I've seen a lot of the 8 pound boxes at over $100 which is also just way too much for that much clay. And then I also can't really buy the like one pound boxes. I go through that in like, I can go through that in a week if I uh, was working on a lot of clay. It's really easy for me to go through over a pound to two pounds in a week, depending on how much clay I'm working on at the time. So yeah, I've been checking like all the different sites. I've even been checking Walmart, I've been checking Blick, um, Amazon, Hobby Lobby, Michaels, all of those websites and have not been able to really find the bulk um, pack of clay. Usually I get it from Blick and their website doesn't even give me a time when they're gonna restock. It says indefinitely out of stock. <laughs> okay, so it is Friday. I have gotten a ton of stuff done. I'm gonna show you guys everything. Um, real quick though, I ended up getting an order of glue sticks. <laughs> I decided to buy it in bulk because it's just been kind of a pain to buy it a hundred sticks at a time at Walmart, so I got a thousand glue sticks. <laughs> I'm gonna fill my container and then put the rest in storage. And then I have a bunch of different pieces that I finished. I'm gonna show you and we're gonna take photos of them for my Etsy shop and for the buyers. But yeah, this was actually a really good buy. I don't know how many people like need bulk glue sticks, but this was like $40. And if you buy glue sticks, you know that 100 is like usually eight bucks. So, so much better. So I will not need to buy glue sticks for quite a while. And then I'm also waiting on um, a big order of resin is coming in. I ordered two gallons, so a gallon of each, the resin and the hardener. And that's supposed to be in today. With that, I'm trying a different brand. Um, I see a lot of people using this brand, so I'm gonna try it out and see if I like it. The other brand that I'm currently using is really good. It's an old container, so it's starting to yellow, but um, it is a little bit heat sensitive, so you can bake resin in the oven with like low temp baked clay, 
and um, normally I have no problem with it, but when I switched over to the resin that I currently use, it does have the tendency to crack if you drop the temperature too fast. So if you bake something and you pull it out of the oven real quick, the surface of the resin will end up like splitting. So obviously I've had to be really careful with it if I'm baking it into clay. And I'd like to try out a different brand to see if I can avoid having to worry about that. Okay, let's get this out of the way. And I'll show you guys all the different creatures I finished. Okay, so first off we have our one tree creature. I did message them and they decided that they wanted moss growing on one side. We added a few more mushrooms um, on the arms and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, these are the changes they wanted me to make. Um, I'm going to take photos of it, make sure that they're happy with it, and then we can probably get it all mailed out. And then I have my green iguana commission. We got it all painted and put together. I'm really happy with how vibrant it came out and I can't wait to hear what they think about it. I haven't done a realistic reptile in quite a while, so um, this was definitely fun. <laughs> I'm actually debating on like making another iguana head because the feet that we molded for the one monitor dragons are very similar to this. So if I made a more like reptile-like head, we could end up molding and casting and doing iguanas or reptiles similar to this. So I kept the pattern and I'm debating on doing that because it would be another way I could use those reptile feet type molds. So yeah, there's that. And then I finally finished all three of our monitor dragons. I'm so happy with how they came out. I love the little floppy bodies. They're just super cute. And I can't wait to make more. I'm going to put them in my shop. So if you guys are watching now, I uploaded them this morning when posting this video. So they should all be in my Etsy shop. Uh, links down below in the description. But I have a green one. I actually love this bright green. Super cute. I got kind of more of a purpley, more wine red colored one. And then I've got this more baby blue one with the spotted belly. I love how the spots look. It's just a fabric that I haven't usually used before, and I think it came out really cute with this one. But yeah, all three of these are going to be in my Etsy shop, so check the links down below if you want one of them. Uh, once they're gone, I'll have to make more, so give me a little bit of time. And if they, again, if they sell really quick, I'll make a bunch more. But um, I can only make so many at a time, so got that. I'm actually getting ready to take photos right now. You see the little branch? My idea is to kind of make them look like a pet reptile and have them laying across the branch. So I managed to set everything up as best I can. I got my fake like grassy like leaf stuff here, my branch tied up here with the little clamps. And I'm just going to take photos and get them posted for you guys. So that's what I got done this week. We got a ton of stuff done. I think, what is it, five creatures completely made. That's, that's not that bad. I was really busy this week. So I'm going to finish taking these photos. I'm going to call the vlog pretty much done. I think we've got enough footage for a nice full vlog for you to see everything. And uh, my grass thing fell. <laughs> <laughs> this side is held together with a little bit of duct tape because I don't have a clamp over here. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!